Hello everyone and welcome to the Bandits desktop. I haven't posted in a while. Um, I've mostly been working on content on my EVE Online channel. But for the very few people who are going to watch this video, I thought this video was interesting because while Japan mirrors the Western world in a lot of behaviors and stuff, things always seem to turn out a little differently over there. And I thought this video was a great example of an alternate reality that could be happening here in the Western world. It's pretty much the same damn thing as what's going on here. Now I'm probably going to end up going ahead and skipping over the first uh, two and a half minutes or so because it's just this guy's personal history that I don't really care about and it has no bearing on any of this so let's check this out I'll pause this from time to time and give my own perspective now I got into college a year earlier than most my peers in the same age because I skipped the great Tokyo of foreigners absolutely not but the Japanese people, at least traditionally prior to the post-pandemic, TikTok-driven Generation Z were a very discreet group of people, including the individuals who worked in the adult industry. So as ironic as this sounds for a country that has one of the largest adult entertainment industries in the whole world, the people who compose such industries are, again, one of the most discreet and circumspect group of people in the whole world. Meaning that the female Japanese individuals who were involved in such quote-unquote adult entertainment work never actually came out on the streets and physically touted themselves. The touting for such establishments were usually done by men such as these guys, who usually asked the people walking by to enter such establishments. But right now, things are changing in Japan. There has been news after news about how recently, it is now young Japanese women who are standing in the area around Okubo Park in Kabukicho who are bargaining with men as they seek to provide these men with quote-unquote services at nearby love hotels in return for financial compensation. Now, I know how it sounds a bit superficial of how this practice have long been existing around the Kabukicho area for a long time, but the Japanese journalists mostly did not care back then as such women were usually older women or foreigners. And also, I know that there is bound to be a comment in the comment section of this video from a guy saying something in the lines of, uh, it's just gonna be the same old reason, girls who are trying to pay college debt, or pay for rent, or saving up to buy expensive handbags, etc. But in fact, these people cannot be more wrong when it comes to assuming the main culprit of this concerning phenomenon of the sudden rise of such quote-unquote standing young women in Japan. So without further ado, let's dive into analyzing the main cause of this alarming phenomenon that's currently happening at the very heart of Tokyo and the important message of takeaway that it has for all of us when visiting or considering any social issues regarding Japan. I think it's funny that they're playing the sad music because um, really these girls are getting themselves completely willingly and knowingly into these situations as we'll see further on in the video. A 23-year-old young Japanese woman by the name of Yuka. Let's just say her name is Yuka for the sake of this video, as the police did not reveal her real name, which has been rightfully done so as she is the victim, is feeling extremely lonely throughout her life in Tokyo. She did not attend university as she did not perform too well academic. And he, uh, he said something very important here. These girls are just victims. Just by happenstance, they ended up in these circumstances. Which, like something else he was talking about earlier in this video, this couldn't be further from the truth. But let's keep exploring. Academically while in school, and was originally raised in the countryside region of Japan. And to start a new life, she recently moved to Tokyo, but soon found out that things were not much different in Tokyo, or even worse when it came to curing her loneliness. And Japan being the most introverted, quote-unquote, people-keeping-to-themselves type of country in the world that it is, nobody checks upon her or asks her if she's doing okay. So while on the verge of a mental breakdown, an idea pops up in her head which is to download a dating app. She puts her profile on the dating app and soon enough, a good-looking guy messages her and asks her if she wants to go out for some coffee. <clears throat> Another important piece there is that it's a good-looking guy, of course. 
she's ignoring anybody that isn't in the top 10% of looks, right? Which I know plenty of guys that are married to less significantly less than good looking chicks and they're happy in life. But of course, um, it only makes sense to go for the absolutely most attractive by far guys on dating apps. All the other ones are invisible. She says yes and there they meet on the first date. On the date, she feels emotions that she has never felt in her entire life. The guy is kind and most of all, listens to what she actually has to say. For the first time in her life, she feels like a princess and thinks that someone actually cares for her. And as the date progressed, the guy asked Yuka if she could be his girlfriend. And Yuka, already infatuated with the guy at this point, says yes. And it's the same old Chad story. Um, she goes after the top, you know, 1 to 10% of guys in a dating app. And then she's just beside herself that this guy that's way out of her league is actually giving her attention and it's too good to be true she passed up all the guys within her league and just somehow this guy that's way out of her league is giving her attention and actually willing to be like yeah i'll spend time with you again but at the end of the date the guy finally confesses to her about what he does for a living, which is that he works as a male host at a host club in Tokyo's red light district of Kapkicho. Then he asks her whether she could sometimes come by to his host club and nominate him to have a drink so that he can move up in the host popularity rankings. He promises her that things will not be expensive at all and that she just merely has to nominate him. And when she visited the host club for the first time, it did not seem as if he was lying. The price that she had to pay to nominate him was only around 1000 Japanese yen, which is only around 10 US dollars. So day after day, she visits the host club to meet her quote unquote boyfriend Egawa, which is the actual real name of the guy that was revealed by the Japanese police. And this is the terrible culprit here. This is the awful bad guy that girls just throw themselves at because he is one of the most good-looking guys in the area and uh he's bad because he uses this to make money but then day after day the price that she had to pay in order to nominate her quote-unquote boyfriend increases substantially according to police investigation he came to a point where yuka had to pay around 200,000 japanese yen or 2,000 US dollars to nominate Egawa, in which she did almost on a nightly basis. She knew that she was getting herself into debt in which she had no way to pay back, but again, given the fact that she was completely enamored with her quote-unquote boyfriend Egawa. <clears throat> and it's funny here, they completely freely admit that she was 100% aware that she would never be able to pay this back, but she went ahead and kept doing it. Now. When someone's in a relationship and uh, their partner is asking them to shell out a bunch of money and this and that, of course, it doesn't make any sense to meet their demands if you could never possibly afford to pay it back. It, it, actually, it actually makes no sense at all to go into any kind of debt for a relationship, whether you can or can't afford to pay it back. It makes no sense at all to do that. You know, hell, in my past relationships, I spent fuck tons of money on these chicks, but it was money that I had. I didn't take out loans and stuff just to try to keep somebody happy who would never possibly be happy with me. I spent money that I had. And like most other guys, I'm tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars in the red on this, but I'm not in debt. I'm doing fine, right? It was money that I had. And so him literally as the only light of hope in her lonely life, she continued going back to the host club and nominated Egawa on a nightly basis. But as we have all expected, there soon came a point in time when Yuka very much fell behind on the due payments to the host club. And once this happened, this is when Egawa encouraged Yuka to head to the Okuba Park in Kabukicho and told her to just quote unquote stand there. He said that if she was just to stand there, then the clients will approach her naturally. 
and I believe everyone here already knows why these guys quote unquote approach these women and what kind of service they're seeking. So day after day there was Yuka standing at the park in Kabukicho along with other young women who were also in similar predicaments, making money by providing these men with quote unquote services at nearby love hotels then heading back to the host club to pay back her debt. And this is where we start getting into the really, really hilarious part of it. So, the story goes like, Chad gets these girls to give him money so that he can pay his bills. And then they get into debt by giving Chad all of this money, thinking that he'll finally settle down with her if she spends enough thousands of dollars. And then, because they're in debt, they go hook themselves to, um, to not Chad's. And so, not Chad's get some time with it as a result. And so, it's a little bit different here in the West, right? Out here in the West, Chad's just have multiple chicks and hook up with them. And then uh, non-Chad's come by later on to pick up the broken pieces. But over here in Japan, Chad gets money from these chicks and then the guys who are invisible to these chicks you know these chicks are invisible to chad unless they give him money and then he'll give them some of that highly valued male attention that they want and then guys who would otherwise be invisible to these girls which is the vast majority of guys are able to pay her money to give them what guys want out of them and so i think it makes a lot of business sense to have this kind of model for society if it's going to keep going this way where the vast majority of guys are invisible to chicks and chicks just always go after the top you know 10 percent of guys because then here in the west the top 10 percent of guys probably on average have you know six or seven different girlfriends Whereas over here in Japan, yeah, they have girlfriends. I don't know. Maybe they sleep together or something. But they at least share these multiple chicks that they have because the chicks are going into debt. And then they decide that the, the one out of a million things that they should be doing to make money is hooking themselves. Instead of just like ending the relationship which isn't even a relationship and then going to school or going into trade school or doing any number of things other than selling their body you know, they they want to get that quick and easy money so that they can go uh, get Chad's ear again because Chad's ear is worth so much it's worth selling their body for without realizing that you know once now that they've sold their bodies of course they've exterminated any chance in hell that they'll be with chad in the in the long run right well let's continue and according to the tokyo metropolitan police the vast majority of the standing young japanese women arrested this year conducted such work for the purpose of procuring money to pay back to these host clubs and the male host of the story egawa was later arrested by the Tokyo Metropolitan Police in April 2023 for seducing, then later actively encouraging Yuka to solicit herself to quote unquote standing up in Kabukicho. And so this guy is in trouble for being Chad. Just being Chad, being born as Chad, doing what Chad does. This is just how it goes, because I'm sure he's always gotten female attention his whole life and he's just used to it. And he's like, hey, I'm going to use this as a tool to get to where I want to go in life. And so, now he's in legal trouble for seducing a chick. But I guarantee he didn't really do much to seduce this chick. I was on a YouTube channel uh, the other day where it was this, this ugly guy. And I was talking about how, how much of a blessing being ugly is. Because he knows his achievements in life are 100% his. Because pretty people get preferential treatment and that got me to thinking right i'm not bad looking i've had way more girlfriends than anybody i've worked with that i can think of like i've worked with 
quite a few guys and most guys I've worked with you know the guys I've worked with probably average three or four past girlfriends in their whole life even guys my own age and me I've I've been with over 30 chicks and so while I don't act like Chad I do have I think similar looks and it's like well at that point if I'm like this guy here then that means I'm not even, I might not even be a very charismatic guy. Like, I was just given those chicks on a silver platter. Hell, the last one begged me to get into a relationship with her because she wanted a, a trophy out of me. So, um, on top of that, it makes me wonder, oh, well, how lenient have employers been with me? because I'm not ugly right and it gets me to thinking like how many of my achievements in life are 100% mine well like this guy chicks just throw themselves at him and now he's getting in trouble for it <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous so not only is Japan now um, socially enforcing that chicks go for the top 10% of guys and then ignore the rest but they're outlawing being one of the top 10% of guys it's ridiculous and it's all an attempt to protect women from either having to settle or being fucked around and really, really if they don't have to settle then all those guys that are getting all the women they want of course, they're not going to settle, which amounts to fucking these chicks around. But that's illegal. Now that's illegal. And he just suggested, hey, this is one way, I guess, you could make money. Who knows how the conversation went between the chick and him. Maybe she was like, oh, well, I can't make money fast enough working a regular job. Do you have any other suggestions? And maybe he suggested this, uh, uh, you know, on the side, like, well, I mean... One way to get really fast money is to be a hooker. Who knows? Maybe that's how it went. Maybe there wasn't much uh, much manipulation and coercion there. This dude's just making money the way he knows best, and that's just by being Chad, how he was born. But that's illegal. And, and it victimizes others. However, um, these girls selling their bodies to guys on the street, well, those guys on the street buying services from them, maybe contracting STDs, and who knows, probably a lot of non-chads go into debt, taking those girls to love hotels, well, we're, we're not going to examine that. That's their own damn fault. But these girls falling for the same fucking thing, well, they're victims. It, it's ridiculous. And pay her earnings to him and his host club. So now, a lot of you may be quite surprised at this point, as again many may have initially assumed that these young Japanese women are conducting such quote unquote standing up work in order to pay college tuition debt, provide for sick families or pay rent, or for the more vain ones, make quick money to buy the Chanel bags, etc. And I'm not saying that these cases do not exist, as after research, I have found some cases where a young woman from a poor family background chose such quote unquote standing up working kabukicho in order to make quick money to pay the rent that they're behind on, etc. etc. But then again, these are minority cases, as the Tokyo Metropolitan Police themselves have stated that the vast majority of the young Japanese women arrested this year in Kabukicho for such quote unquote standing up work were all doing it for host related costs. That's crazy, right? There's probably more of these girls than there are these club guys. And so guaranteed, multiple girls can be cited for being on the street for one guy. It's ridiculous. And, uh, you know, they're victims. They're, they're victims of Chad. They're victims of society. They're probably even victims of the guys who give them money so that they can get attention from girls that they would otherwise be invisible to and it's it's all men's fault and society's fault and these poor girls they just uh, i mean maybe they're amazingly stupid 
maybe um, we should assume that <clears throat> women are just amazingly stupid because that's kind of what they're insinuating here like oh they don't know any better they were fully aware they were getting into debt but they're like children they don't know any better oh they were well aware that there were multiple other girls chasing after this one guy and they knew there was probably hardly any chance at all they would end up with him but but they don't know any better and this gets really rich at the end here. I'm gonna skip forward a little bit here. This gets really fucking rich at the end. The belief that we are the weird ones, blindly judging that no true love can possibly develop between a male host and a female client. So as you can see from this, these male hosts in Japan are not just some gigolos with funky hair. A lot of them, especially the really skillful ones, are very, very good at what they do, which is to exploit the minds of many of the young women in Japan, especially the more inexperienced, gullible ones, and make them think that true love and relationship between them can eventually manifest reality. Of course, under the condition that the women orders a $2,000 champagne for 10 days in a row at the host club. And as... Yeah, I don't know how social media is out in Japan, but the whole Chad meme is very well known out here. And it's amazing to me that chicks over here in the West um, all run after Chad still. It's a well-known thing. I mean, so many chicks that I know and talk to in real life, um, they're, they're well aware of this whole Chad thing. And what do they do? They still go after Chad. I mean, I was talking to a chick the other night, um that was trying to get me i mean quite a few chicks on the internet when they hear my voice and see my face and understand that i'm a foreman in my trade and that i make a healthy amount of money you know they they come flocking to me and they're like oh please relationship please oh get me get me and i'm just like no nah, man i mean shit what about the hundred guys you passed up back there Oh, well, they don't understand me, which is a euphemism for they're not as physically attractive. Maybe they don't make quite as much money. Maybe they're not as socially adequate. I don't know. But they fell short in some aspect or another where I excel. And so they're going after me instead of some guy that would more than happily settle down with them and have a family just like they want. Instead, they use those guys for their time and their energy just to get validation on the internet so that then they can uh, feel good enough about themselves I don't know why they feel bad about themselves I mean society puts them up on a pedestal all the time but it's so that they can feel good enough about themselves in order to try to manipulate a guy like me into a relationship or a guy like this club guy who actually makes money off of it that's genius man that's G we should have this model in the West where Chad's set up at clubs and they're like, hey, just like in the West, they're like, hey, yeah, I'm down with a relationship. I think maybe, I guess not, possibly, there is a chance, maybe, girl. And the girls are like, oh, that means 100%, yes, I'm totally going to go after him and throw my money at him. And then they get into debt. And then they'll give regular guys the time of day so that they can earn some money to give it to Chad. I mean, that's... It's a fantastic model. Um, I also think it's ridiculous. One of my uh, fellow awokened dudes on the internet brought it to my attention that uh, they, they call these girls lonely constantly. And these girls get approached on the street, guys give them attention, but they're not the right guys. They're lonely for Chad. Regular guys are invisible to them because they believe they're going to be the one in a million that wins the lottery. Every single girl deserves to be the one in a million who wins the lottery and gets to settle down with a rock star bodybuilder that loves to travel. Let's continue. If you have so with the case of young Yuka and the male host Egawa, it is exponentially easier for the hosts to conduct such psychological manipulation to a young 20-something year old woman who just moved to Tokyo from the countryside compared to, let's say, a 34-year-old woman from Tokyo who have been here and done that. 
and so they're saying you know most chicks fall for this kind of crap and why would chad want to be messing around with a 34 year old woman who has slept with numerous guys for money anyway why would he even when he's got all these 20 year old girls flocking after him who are nice and young and pretty when he has all of these girls hanging off of his arms why would he anyway even try to manipulate a 34 year old into giving him the time of day and giving him money when there's a plethora of young more fun to look at chicks that are willing to shovel money over to him instead it makes no sense and already had numerous experiences in trial and error with these type of quote-unquote bad boy men. The last main reason as to why many of the women in Japan are so immersed in the nation's host culture is actually quite simple. It's just that they enjoy talking, having drinks, and making physical contact with good-looking men. Plain and simple. Yeah. So, they get what they want, but somehow they're still victims. You know, they, they pay money for this service, they're paying money for this service. They just want to talk with a hot guy. They just want a little bit of bodily contact, like this guy is kissing her on the forehead. They, they just want a little attention from Chad, and they're paying for it. They pay for a service, and they get it. And But now they're victims. Just, just wait till the end. It's, it's really rich. Their logic goes in the lines of, a lot of men in Japan also visit hostess clubs in Kabakuras, right? To talk and have drinks with these beautiful women? Samuros, we like drinking with good looking men and spending money on them. It helps us to blow off steam. And, and that is a good point. That is a good point this chick is making, right? She, she has a really good fucking point there. It's, she's saying, hey guys go to the clubs for the f same thing there's nothing wrong with guys at clubs getting paid by chicks for the same thing that guys pay chicks at clubs for it's the same it's equality but i i can't remember this part this guy probably comes up with some justification on how women are victimized when they do that but when men do that it's fine if we have the financial means that allows us to live this lifestyle, then what's the problem? And to be frank, I believe such a mindset held by some women as the prime motives for frequenting the host clubs is probably the healthiest type of host female client relationship that there is, compared to the loneliness dangling with the irrational hope of a potential relationship type of causes in which I have mentioned previously. Now, what can we then take away from this whole phenomenon of the rapid rise in the number of these quote-unquote standing young women in Japan? First, it shows us a glimpse of the dark side of the host culture of Japan. Thanks to the recent rise of many celebrity hosts in Japan, the host scene in Japan is now more mainstream than ever before. This means that less women perceive these hosts as these quote-unquote adult industry workers, but more in the lines of almost semi-public figures and celebrities, which in turn increases their popularity and demand, which then in turn allows many of these money-driven hosts, as in the case of the recently arrested Egawa, to carry out their schemes to psychologically manipulate many young naive women, even to the point of successfully persuading them to selling their bodies. And right there, it said that this culture is ubiquitous all throughout Japan and everyone realizes that these hosts are just kind of like celebrities that people pay to spend time with and that's exactly what these girls are doing but they're expecting more just imagine all right just imagine I go to a, a club and those girls here in the West they will sit down with you and have drinks. You can buy them drinks and socialize. That is a thing uh, for anybody that hasn't been to adult clubs here in the West. You can do the same thing with these girls. And they're wearing hardly anything. Hell, they might even be topless. And they'll sit there and act interested in your stories. Even though they've probably heard it from a hundred other guys before. They'll act like they're enjoying themselves with you they'll act completely interested and you could just sit there if if all you want is female company you don't have to pay for dances you don't have to pay them to do dirty things on the stage 
if you're if you're buying them drinks and handing them twenty dollar bills frequently enough, they'll just sit there at the table. They prefer doing that. They'll just sit there at the table, hanging out with you and having a good time for the night. They'll even skip their sessions on the stage. Some of them. Some of them will take a break from you to go on the stage because they do make quite a bit of money up on the stage when people are just throwing dollar bills constantly. But then they'll come back to your table because they know you are you are the oasis that night. You can do that. And I don't hear anybody complaining about old old lonely guys being exploited, spending their retirement money on just sitting down and having drinks with these girls. Nobody has ever complained about that because those guys are getting what they want. Just like these girls are getting what they want from these male hosts. It's the same thing. The only difference is the reproductive biological equipment that these individuals are born with. That's it. This leads to our next point, which is our respectful urge to everyone who's watching this video to take this issue more seriously and with a sense of thoughtful maturity. For some reason, when it comes to any issues regarding Japan, many have this condescending approach to the whole thing and approach it as if it's all a joke that's happening not in a real country, composed of real people with real problems, or some type of virtual fantasy land. That Japan is just this really weird, quirky country full of anime, otakus, and a bunch of other century cities, and once again, everything happening inside the country is something that is just intangible and not real life. For instance, in our previous homeless teenager issue of Tokyo video that we made that almost went up to a million views, before we had to delete it due to us mentioning some information about a hotel chain located in Kabukicho, there were so many comments in the lines of, to quote, heading to Japan right now, more the reason to go to Japan. Like, here we are discussing a serious issue about domestic violence and potentially as violence conducted onto minors. Then there's a bunch of people joking around saying that they're heading to Japan right now as they think this is cool and want to come check it out. So through this video, we hope that the message gets across to the people residing in the West, the Japan, despite all the eccentricities in which they do have, is just as much a real country filled with real people, with real problems as much as the US or any other country that you're currently residing in. Our next point is to some degree connected to our previous point, which is our sincere urge for all of us to have some sympathy for this quote-unquote standing young Japanese woman of Kabukicho. It has become an issue in Japan as of late of how a bunch of thoughtless live streamers think that this is all just so funny, so go up to this park where these girls are standing at, stick their little live streaming cameras up in their face, and start talking to them in quite a condescending fashion. So there is currently a rising concern that many of these immature, thoughtless people who just think that this is also amusing continue to frequent this area and thus help establish the location these days as almost a quote-unquote tourist spot among the younger crowd. But come on guys, the vast majority of these young women, while mostly being able to keep their emotions in on the surface and control themselves from having a mental breakdown, at least publicly, are in such a bad place psychologically, needless to mention physically as well, literally being manipulated psychologically by many of these hosts to be doing this type of work on the street as in the case of Yuka in our story. So the last thing we need is a bunch of live streamers sticking cameras up on their face or a bunch of degenerates oh, going up to them and starting a conversation with them thinking that they're being funny and a practicing quote-unquote game in terms of talking to Japanese women, etc. Now, if you really want to help them out, you can contact non-profit organizations such as Rescue Hub ran by thoughtful individuals such as Arata Sakamoto that helps this quote-unquote standing young Japanese woman of Kabukicho to escape from their predicaments and receive the support that they need. And that's the richest part here. That there is actually a charity set up to save chicks from the choices they knowingly and willingly make. Yet, one more facet of uh, just providing them with everything. 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 It's ridiculous. You know... My sympathy would go as far as whatever $50 could get me. Seriously. Because, well, I don't know what their perspective is on a, a Western guys. I'm sure these chicks would never give me the time of day unless I have a $50 bill in my hand so that they could go give it to Chad. And that's exactly how far I would help. 
I mean, shit. If you want help out of debt you knowingly and willingly got yourself into, for whatever reason. Um, if, if you want help out of debt, I'm, you, you gotta do something for it. I, I don't understand this. Oh, give, give them bailouts because, oh, they made a mistake. I've made mistakes. I've made mistakes in the past. I, hell, I, uh, I maxed out a credit card, actually, um, because the government wouldn't give me assistance because I couldn't afford food. And so I used a credit card over the course of four or five months, and I, I ended up maxing it out to buy food and other necessities for me to survive. And I spent four years paying it off because the interest rate was so high, I, I paid off that $2,000 multiple times over. And that wasn't even because, oh, I wanted to spend this on some chick that because she's she's got 50 other dudes interested in her, but I think I'm gonna be the one if I just max out this credit card on her. It wasn't even that, it was just a matter of survival. And so, <clears throat> I dug myself out of that hole that, yeah, I mean, I could have made better career choices probably to not get into that situation in the first place where I was starving in winter and had to, my, my only option because the government wouldn't help me, they just asked me, hey, where's, where's that $16,000 before tax that you made in the last one year? Where is it? And of course I told them, hey, uh, do you understand that $500 rent per month, one year, that's six grand. You know, after tax, 16 grand becomes like 13. And so that leaves me with seven grand for food, electricity, heat, gas to get to and from work, cell phone, car insurance, all these expenses. Really, if you added all that up, you would discover that I was acquiring money by illegitimate means as well in order to cover my expenses. But they thought I should have some excess of money and they wouldn't help me. And so I maxed out a credit card in order to survive. I don't see anybody setting up charities for that. Instead I see this charity for chicks that wanted to dump money. They wanted to shower money or they wanted to shower this guy they were interested in with money in hopes that she would be the one out of 50 girls that actually got his attention when logically that makes no sense guaranteed there were other girls spending even more money than her on him especially when it's common knowledge as they say in Japan that these hosts just hang out with you for money and that's the whole that's the whole scheme behind it so I had a friend right and I thought he was an absolute fucking moron because we went to a strip club one time and uh, man he was gone with this girl in the back for like six songs and I was like where the fuck is this guy it's like how is he affording this well I got approached by bouncers and got extorted into paying for his lap dances because he ended up sneaking out of the club when he realized this girl wasn't actually interested in him. She was dancing on him for money. And when he racked up six songs worth of debt with her and couldn't pay it, he freaked out and ran away because she kept asking him, you want me to keep going? And he's like, oh yeah. Next song, you want me to keep going? He's like, oh yeah. Because he thought that she was just there to try to get a boyfriend that strippers actually don't do it for a living they're trying to get a boyfriend which is ridiculous everybody knows I'm sure that guy probably knew he just thought he was special enough to get free lap dances from a stripper because she was so interested in him and believe me, he was one of the most uninteresting guys I've ever met. But he thought he was so interesting, this stripper actually was giving him fully nude lap dances um, because she was so interested in snagging him into her relationship. 
when usually he had problems getting a relationship from any regular chick. And you know what? I ended up holding him liable, and I ended up uh, getting him to pay me back for his fucking lap dance. He ended up paying me back over the course of four weeks. So I was so pissed off. I was like, motherfucker. So I used to sell to him too. I was like, I'll not sell you anything until you fucking like give me double the value each time until you're paid off on this other fucking thing too. You owe me money, motherfucker. And then I stole one of his girlfriends too. Just for good measure. Well, that didn't work out very well because then the girl tried to kill me. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. It's just ridiculous to set up a charity to save fully sentient adults from their own choices. Now, it mentioned something about kids earlier. I don't know what that was about. If if kids are coerced into this kind of shit, that's, that's fucked up and sick. And yeah, there should be charities and shit set up to help fund um, even vigilantes that take out operations like that. Uh, there's one that I I contribute to that gets kids in... Oh, I forget what even country it is. But it, it gets kids out of um, bondage and, and stuff. And it's a very solid uh, charity. I've, I've seen what they do. And they properly allocate funds. And actually rescue kids from situations like that. And, and they risk their lives doing that for the kids. And then they put them in compounds and rehabilitate them. Now, that's that's a worthy charity. Saving a 23-year-old girl from the debt she got into for Chad, that is not a worthwhile charity for anybody to donate to. There's so much more work that we can do for children and for the animals and for victims of actual disasters that we should absolutely not dedicate any funds to some bullshit like this. If you want to donate to charity, do not contribute to something that is meant to just get adults out of situations that they got themselves into knowingly and willingly for free so that they can continue making the same fucking mistakes with their lives over and over and not receive the consequences for their stupid actions. Once again, we need to be donating to stuff to help animals because they can't speak for themselves for children because they they can't speak for themselves either and for victims of actual disasters even relief funds for victims of war because it's not citizens faults what their governments do it is entirely these girls faults that they ran themselves into debt thinking that they would be the special one out of many others giving these guys money to finally land a relationship with Chad. It's ridiculous. We have so many causes to donate to. So many causes that need charities. And this is not one of them. Well, you guys have a good one. I told you it was going to get rich at the end. Ridiculous, shameful shit. Peddling. Asking for money for these girls, these adult women, when we have people who, and individuals, and other sentient beings who really can't help themselves that need our help. Ridiculous, shameful shit. You guys have a good one, and I'll catch you guys in the next one in like <laughs> in like six months. But you can watch my uh, YouTube channel uh eve destruction broadcasting if you want to watch what i'm doing in eve online i'm okay i'm alive i'm doing great donate to charities for animals children and victims of natural disasters and casualties of war instead of this garbage later guys